Yeah, yeah, uh, man, it, it speaks volumes. And even when we talk about the concept of the love that, I, you know, the four steps, it's like the first one was listen. Um, I'm actually a introvert at heart. So it's hard to believe because people see me speak on stages. I'm in the schools all the time. I'm giving public, you know, uh, announcements and things like that. But it's like I'm actually very introverted. And, and I've always been that way since I was a kid. I was the one that's quiet in the back to myself, not trying to bring too much attention. And that has allowed me to develop this this skill of listening. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on, family? Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. And you all know that this is your number one source for podcast news, podcast how-tos, and also interviews. All right. But before we get into today's episode, and I'm excited about today's guest because, man, this brother been out here killing it. All right. He been eating. OK, I told him I said he out here eating. Uh, <laughs> but I want to let you all know that uh, if you're a speaker, you're a coach and you're a consultant and you're looking for a way to accelerate your credibility, you're looking for a way to be able to generate some more leads and also trying to just find a way to monetize your message. I want you to go to get paid with podcasting.com. So you can go ahead and get signed up for the free training because I'm going to show you some secret hacks that allow me and my business to be able to leverage speaking to be able to generate 21K from the crib. All right. So go mm -hmm. to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. And then now we're diving into today's episode. So, man, I got my man, I got, I got my I got my brother from another on, on, on the pod today. Man, I, I, I want to I want to just just introduce you all to to a gentleman who. You know, not only is he a phenomenal storyteller, uh, but he's a mental health advocate out here. He, he's a multiple time author. All right. He a podcast host. Man, he, <laughs> he does it all. But he keeps that same message is what's really powerful. So I, I want to welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show, my brother, Nate Evans Jr. Nate, what's going on, bro? Hey, man. Look, I appreciate you, bro. And um, I love everything you're doing. Uh, I honestly see you as the podcast expert. Um, so I need to tap in with you to get some tips and things like that because you're really doing it. I'm fresh in the game, but I'm loving it. Um, but it's an honor to be here. Yes, sir. Most definitely, man. That's love. That, that's love. I, I appreciate that, Nate. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> um, but Nate, man, I'm I'm a I'm man, I'm, I'm gonna kick the ball, kick the ball over to you. And and I want to give you the opportunity just to, you know, let the people know a little bit more about you if this is their first introduction to you. So please, you have the floor. Yeah, absolutely, man. Again, I appreciate it. I'm humbled to be here. Um, Nate Evans Jr. I'm not huge on titles, but I like to tell people that I create experiences for apprehensive individuals to feel worthy when they're waging a war in their mind. So people are like, oh, what's that? Oh, my gosh. They get deep into that. So then I go into, OK, I'm a professional speaker. I'm an author, a podcast host, coach, a trainer, mentor, mental health advocate. Um, you know, and I do all of those different things and they all tie in with the message of change what we normalize, which is my mission, which is my life's work, which is to really change the minds of different individuals from things that weren't necessarily working and serving them, especially around mental health and emotional wellness. And let's change that around and let's build new norms. Um, for me, my family, you know, just from years and years ago, we had a certain mindset towards healing and therapy and and just growth in general, it was a very almost poverty mindset. So for me, I have a responsibility and I know that I have generations inside of me and I want to make sure that we change what we normalize so the future can be better. Yeah, man, I, I really I really can can appreciate the, the work that you're doing um, just just with the around the speaking, the training and the coaching. Because uh, I, I think it, it's, it's a message that does need to be heard. And it's a message that if you haven't put on T-shirts yet, Nate, you need to put on some T-shirts, man, uh, for, for sure. Hey, if it's but, on the um, hoodie, I got to get it on some shirts. I got I got to get it out there and get it here on. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was about to say, I knew I, was about to say, I, knew I seen it on the hoodie because I was on your Instagram the other day. I was like, I thought I seen it. Yeah, but, I got to um, get that up. Nate. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, for, for sure, man. J just in case, you know, if people got something for the summer and for the winter. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I got to have both. <laughs> for the summer and the winter but in 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 terms of in in terms of like what you said with your own story right you said you all had a poverty mindset towards healing 
Mm. Like why why it why do you think that is? Talk talk about the why behind it. Yeah, yeah, the why, man, it goes deep. Um, I think it has to do a lot with perception and our environment. Uh, so I grew up, you know, very low income, uh, pretty much poor, um, bouncing around from home to home. I went to nine different schools from first grade all the way to high school. Uh, but I grew up mainly in this community, Pleasantville, which is the city. But I lived on both sides, north side and south side from time to time. But most of my time was spent on the north side. And we lived in a place called Woodland Terrace, which was, you know, filled with with gangs, with violence, with drugs, with abuse, all these different things. And we normalized the negative things. And I didn't see much healing or conversation around mental health around me. It was as if nobody wanted to be the trailblazer because you didn't want to be the oddball out. It was much easier and much better to just fit in and go with the norm. And I watched how that damaged so many people, including myself growing up and the trauma that that built in me as a young teen, as a young adult, all the way up to my, my late 20s. I had this trauma. And even from time to time now, I have certain moments where I get a little anxious, right? But I'm able to put different practices in a place because I did seek out the healing. But growing up, I didn't see those things, man. We normalized so much uh, uh, just negative behavior. And then here's the interesting part. And I believe that this is true, especially for the African-American community. We all had those family members, right? Who were a little off. And you're like, man, what, what's up with dude? Like, Oh, he oh, that's your uncle. He's just acting crazy. And we just we just labeled it as crazy, not realizing that this per this person may have been having an episode that this person was going through different traumas. Right. We never really addressed it or put language to it. And it wasn't until I got older and got exposed to mental health and emotional wellness and emotional intelligence and all these different terms and things where my mind started to open. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is why I react this way. This is why I respond this way. I got to address these issues. And I just happen to be the trailblazer in the family to say that I'm no longer going to stay in pain. I know what this pain feels like, and I want to try something different. Even though I don't know what therapy looks like or healing looks like, I want to go see what's on the other side because I'm tired of being here. Yeah, man, because um, j just like j like just like what you said, it, it it goes to I think the, the the phrase is you know if you if you continue to do the same thing you're gonna continue to get the same result right, right? so you know with, with you saying we, we got to do something different we got to make a shift we got to make a change this is necessary for my own for my own development but then mm -hmm. also as we were talking about earlier offline you said you were married so you know <laughs> if you're not the best version of Nate then how can Nate be the best partner the best coach right. facilitator what what whatever uh, so Nate, man, I, I, I want you, I want you just to take, take time, Nate, take, take time because you, you wrote a book also, you, you've written, you, you're part, you, you've written two books, yep. right? How, how did you decide that you making the conscious decision to evolve as a person was one thing, right? And develop as a person, but then to say, you know what, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put myself out there. And I'm going to I'm going to share this message in this way. How, how did you decide that? Because I know that can be something that for some people, it's like a level of uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, it's interesting because I had this whole transition process, right, where I really started to seek out healing and started to see like, OK, none of this is happening to you. It's happening for you. Right. And it's all the testimony. I was um, really going through a dark spot. One of my best friends, he's actually he was actually in my wedding. Um, his name is Tony Chapman. He started taking me to the gym. And what happened was he exposed me to other men that looked like me. And it was the craziest thing that happened. We would sit in the locker room and we would have conversations about life, about health, about the things we were going through and how we were growing through it. And I remember I was like, oh, my goodness, this is like a whole new language to me. And I wanted more and more of it. And I started to grow. Right. Physically, I was growing because we were in the gym. But mentally, emotionally, I started to grow. And then I started to journal. I just started to write. I, I started writing a lot. And I've always been an avid writer since I was a kid. I loved writing um, and just being creative in that way. So I started to write. I was writing poetry. I was writing down journal stuff. And one day I remember going to Six Flags. It was me, my wife, who was my, she was actually, I think my girlfriend at the time. And um, I'm sitting on my phone and I'm in my notes and I'm just writing out different things about college. Because I want the people don't know. And I don't recommend this. I went to five different colleges. That's actually a part of the story. 
Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I went to five different schools. First two schools, I had four ride scholarships. And I remember I constantly was running from anxiety, constantly running from depression. And that's part of my story and my journey. And that's how I share my message. But I remember going to Six Flags, writing these things out. But I started to write out lessons that I learned and different things that I had. Um, I, I pretty much learned on my journey from each college and what applied. Excuse me, my dogs. Come on, y'all. Come here. Come here. I apologize, podcast listeners. I got Yorkies, and um, they are the most aggressive dogs ever. They just, they don't like people knocking on the door, or walking by anything. But um, uh, back to the story. So I started to write these things out, and what I realized was that at every college stop that I made, I actually learned lessons that I applied to this day. So I started to write those lessons out, and I was like, yo, I think this is something. And I'm like, yo, I believe that this can actually help somebody, because I started to share it with my friends, and it was like, yo, wow. Like, where'd you get that from? And I'm like, that was actually a life experience. And these were the things I pulled from it. So I wrote that out. I kept writing it out. And from there, I just started to make an outline. Every stop that I made, those five different schools, what happened when I got home? Okay, what happened there? And these ideas started to come together. And from there, I sought out to make it a book. I started to, um, you know, seek out different individuals. And it was interesting because at the time, I didn't know how to publish a book. And now that I know I can pump one out and no problem, like I understand the process. But during that time, I didn't really know. And I was going to pay somebody like twenty five hundred to help me do this thing. And I realized that I didn't have that kind of money to throw around, throw around, especially because I was trying to get an engagement ring <laughs> at the time. So I actually did my did my Googles. I tell people to do your Googles. I jumped on YouTube and I learned how to, to put this thing together. It was really rough. It wasn't edited well. The formatting was terrible, but I knew I had a message that could help somebody else that was in the same spot as me or a similar spot. And that's what really inspired me to, to get this message out, to tell my story, to write this book, because I knew somebody was going through a very similar problem, a very similar issue. And they were anxious and they were worried and they were stressed and they were going through, you know, suicidal ideations and all these things. And I was like, I got to get this to them. You know, take the focus off myself. This is for somebody. And from there, I just got on it, put that thing out. And um, I actually wrote a second edition to it. I put the first edition out. It's real glossy. It's actually on my bookshelf here. It was real glossy, real rough. I took a picture in the gym. Like, it was crazy. Um, but what, once I learned how to really set it up professionally to get it in bookstores, I came back, wrote a second edition, and wrote another chapter and put it in there. Dope, man. Dope. I mean, the 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 two things I really, really just I want to just ex extract from that story is you said you just you just had to get it done. Right. You just you had to put the message out there. It, 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 it's rough. It's rugged. And I think that like the parallel with that in our own stories. Right. At the, at the end of the day, it's it's not like it's not going to always be pretty and perfect, but it, it's going to it's going to get done. So I really I really like the fact you did that. But then I think the, the other part that's really good, Nate, is you came back and did a second edition, right? So the first first edition is, you know, evolving, growing, learning. Second edition, you know, cultivating what we've already learned and moving forward. So, man, I think that I think it, it, it explains you pretty well, man. You know, just just from, you know, going from one spot and then, you know, coming coming over into coming into evolving and growing and moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. And it was interesting. Like I said, I was working, I'm reading my book and I'm like, man, this is great, but it, it is really poorly put together. And I was like, I really want to help somebody with this. Like I said, it was typos. It was all types of stuff. And I just didn't know. And I was like, I feel like this story um, can reach more people because I was going to just write a completely different book. And I was like, no, this story isn't done. I still need to get this out, but it needs to be better prepared so I can actually get into the places that it needs to go. And from there, I redid it, redid the cover. Um, at that time, I actually had graduated with my bachelor's degree. So I did a new cover photo, um, really made it like this uh, matte material, had the editing done perfect, all of these different things. And I actually did an event with Barnes and Noble at my college right after that, like once I released it, because it was able to, they were actually able to utilize it in the store because I understood the whole ISBN thing and how to set up the publishing. So um, it was a journey, man. It was a journey, but I'm glad that I went back and I didn't allow that story to just die with that first book. But I, I kind of brought it back to life and added some some real flair to it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's how. And 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 just just so listeners know, we're, we're talking about the the building muscle book, correct? 
Yes, yes. Building muscle, life is your trainer. And and if I could say one thing about the title, mm -hmm. it's funny because I was a personal trainer at the time, right? And I told you that when, when I made that transition in my life was where? At the gym. So mm -hmm. it was building muscle and the, the tagline, the subtitle was life is your trainer, right? It was so funny because so many people bought the book because they thought it was a fitness book. <laughs> and I don't talk about fitness at all in the book, like whatsoever. It's like, y'all thought this was a workout book, but y'all didn't know. And it was so many people that came to me like, y'all had no idea that this was happening in your life and that you grew through this. So it was kind of cool because people bought it for another reason, um, but they were able to grab this story out of it that really spoke life into them. Yeah, no, no, another another thing is is just, you gotta have a cool title. You know, you got, you got a cool title <laughs> that really cool resonates title. with people. Yes, then sir. hey you know they, they they definitely can they can cash in okay so you you so so we wrote we wrote building muscle and then now we we, we have we have another book as well nay talk talk about talk about i love you man talk talk yeah. about talk, talk about i love you letters of love from black men to young black males mm -hmm. talk to us yeah this book was um man this book is super important to me uh just the power in it the dynamic of it. Um, prior to me writing this book, I was speaking at a lot of different schools on mental health and emotional wellness. Um, but I was speaking at a lot of PWIs during that time. I was at all the schools on the East Coast doing my, my messages, my seminars. And this mental health conference had came across my email to Raji P. Henson, um, you know, the famous actor. She has her own nonprofit foundation based around mental health for black individuals, black and brown people. So she put this entire conference on and I'm like, yo, I got to go to this conference. It's not far, it's in DC. And I'm telling my wife, I'm like, hey, I want to go. Now my wife is a, a clinical social worker. You know, she does therapy every single day. So I'm like, look, I tried to talk her into, I'm like, look, you can get your continuing education credits. I'm gonna just go cause I want to go. Like this would be a great thing. So she agreed. We went down to DC to this conference and it literally blew my mind to see this many uh, uh, black mental health professionals. I remember at uh, at lunch, we were, we were at lunch, Taraji's talking and a bunch of other celebrities, Charlamagne and God's there. And I'm sitting next to a, a young black woman who's a brain surgeon. I'm sitting next to a psychologist. Like I, it just blew my mind. I'm like, yo, I had no idea. But what happened was this. The first session I went to was called Man Up. It was uh, a guy named Dr. Michael Lindsay. He's a professor at NYU. I believe he's like a director now. He started his session talking about the, the, the suicide rate of young black boys. And I was like, man, I never heard this information before. Like I felt oblivious to it. And when he was explaining, I'm like, yo, this is like a crisis. Why are we not talking about this on the news? Why is this not plastered everywhere? And he was really bringing light to it. And I remember at the end of that conference, I was like, man, what can I offer? What can I bring? Like, I'm not, I'm not a therapist. I'm not licensed or anything like that. What can I bring to the table? Now I have this gift in, in writing and creating and speaking and things like that. I'm like, I gotta get a message out. So I remember coming home, jumping right on it. I start writing, I'm typing. I'm like, all right, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. I got all these notes from the conference and I'm like, you know what? The main takeaway that I took from that conference was that we need love, right? We need love. Out of all of the, the analytical stuff that they said and all of this deep stuff. And we talked about ACEs and all these different tests and exams. The main thing that I took away was love. And I wrote love into my own little acronym, which was listen, be open hearted, validate and encourage. Those were my main takeaways. Listen, be open hearted, validate and encourage. And I remember I'm writing a book and I'm like, all right, I got to get this thing together. How do I put this out? What do I call the book? What do I say to the book? Um, and I prayed on it for a while. And this is huge for anybody creating. I, I like prayed on it. I sat on it for a while before I started to really try to put this thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to write letters to young black boys. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write like 70, 80, 90 letters to young black boys. So I started doing that. And I got like three letters in. And I was like, yo, that's a lot of letters. <laughs> that's a lot of letters. I don't know if I got 90, 80 in me. So I'm like, all right, what's the next option? You know what I'm saying? Because I want these things to hit. I don't want them to just be some generic letters. I want them to be powerful. So I brainstormed a little bit more and I had the idea to invite other black men in. 
So I know I know quite a few men just from my network that are in different professions. Some are speakers, counselors, uh, some are in real estate, some are in politics, uh, healthcare. And I started to reach out to these guys like, hey, you know, I'm doing this project, I'm doing this book. I would love for y'all to, to be a part of this and and share in these letters. And they all agreed. So it ended up being, I believe, 13 of us, including me, that agreed to do this book. And I was like, man, thank God. Now you got to think. This was 2019 when I asked them to do this. 2019. Fast forward, we get to 2020. As we all know what happened in 2020, the pandemic, everything shut down, right? Thank God we had the power of technology. We're on here now. We just did some Zoom calls. I told them the vision and the mission of what I was looking to do. I said that the vision is to love black men and children as if they've never been hated. Because I heard Dr. Michael Lindsay say that at the conference. And it really spoke to me. So I said, look, that's the vision for when you're writing these letters. I want you to pour into the younger version of yourselves, pour into your children, pour into the kids in the community. And these guys delivered, man, on these letters. I was so just elated when I received these letters back. And I remember everything's coming together in the book. I put the love principle in the book. And I'm like, all right, what's the cover? You know what I'm saying? What's the cover? And, and what do we title this thing? Because I didn't plan on titling the book, I Love You, at all. That was not me. I did not plan on titling the book that. Cause I'm like, ah, I love you. It sounds kind of cheesy. I don't know if people are going to get it, but it's like God kept pressing on me, like that's the title of the book, and I just kind of surrendered to it. Like, all right, you know what? That's the title of the book, right? And it hit me. A revelation hit me. Like, you know what's going to happen when somebody picks that book up? What's going to happen? They're going to say, "I love you," to themselves just by picking the book up off the shelf. I love you. It's like you're going to literally hear that from yourselves. And some people haven't heard that. And God knows how long, especially these young kids out where I live. People aren't saying I love you. So something like that is just going to grab their attention. So I got the name and the cover is very interesting because I'm not on the cover of this book at all. Um, it's, it's a photo. It actually has a few of my friends and different things on there. What happened was in 2020, the pandemic happened. But then we had Ahmaud Arbery. Then we had George Floyd, and then there was all of this racial tension in the country, right? What happened was one of my good friends, he's a great photographer. He was going to all of the protests, taking pictures and putting them on Facebook. He would take these pictures. He would put them on Facebook. And when I say these pictures spoke to me, bro, he was taking them in black and white and posting them of people protesting and people on the street and kids. And I was like, yo, these stories tell such a, a, a powerful picture. Like they, they, they tell that they, these pictures tell such a powerful story. I mean, and I, I reached out to him. I said, hey, I have this idea, bro. I want to stage a protest. He was like, huh? I'm like, I want to stage a protest, but I want to protest for the love of black men and black boys. And he agreed. I honestly didn't think he would agree, but he agreed. So what <laughs> happened was we went to my old neighborhood, uh, one of my neighborhoods that I grew up in with my pop up. I had I called I called like 30 guys. And I was like, hey, wear a black T-shirt. And I made a bunch of different signs as if we were protesting. I say, I love you. You know, black boys are smart. Great. All these different things, all these affirmative, just just posters out there. And we went out there literally on the street, like 20, 30 deep. And we marched screaming, I love you. I love you. And he just snapped photos. Boom, 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 boom. Snapped so many photos. And when I went through the one that's on the cover, um, actually, I'll show you. For those that are watching, the one that's on the cover, as you can see, there's guys with their fists up. You can see people screaming, yelling, and really, it was just really emotional. And I was like, that's the one right there. Because I want you to know that we are affirming you, that we see you, that we love you. You know what I'm saying? Because when George Floyd happened, we saw the situation where it almost looked like we didn't matter at all to the world, in a sense. The way that he was treated, the way he was crying out for his mother and nobody did anything you know what i mean it was like yo this is the image that these kids are seeing via social media that's continuing to play via the tv this is what they're seeing that okay as a black man as a black boy this is how i'm valued and we had to erase that and really again it goes back to change what we normalize we had to change that perspective and like no your value your love we care about you we're here for you and that was the whole almost premise behind the book the protests and we put that thing out at the end of 2020 
And um, in 2021, it became an Amazon bestseller. Man, con con congrats on that, man. Congrats, congrats on the bestseller status. And uh, man, con congrats on, on the genius marketing, dude. Because... <laughs> That I mean that that's that's genius because you. yes you set it up to you know to to stage a protest um, you know to to capture some photos and capture some footage but I would take a stab at it and I would say that at least one young black boy heard that absolutely at least one black boy saw saw a group of black men marching in unity together and affirming them even though they didn't know them or may not have even seen them mm. so man you know just thinking about that and just think about what that does for their confidence man that's that's the most powerful part just knowing that and i've spoken to different people who have bought this you know purchased this book for their kids or for their nephew um even a few who are in like juvenile detention centers and prisons and they like got this book for their loved one. And it's just like, man, I've seen how warm kids have felt, how seen they have felt, knowing that they have, you know, 13, you know, uncles almost in a sense that are there for them, that love them, that see them. And it's a beautiful thing when I hear parents say that they're reading this with their kid or the teen is reading it themselves or they're picking a letter a day. You know what I mean? And it's just it's such a beautiful thing. And it's not anything that I could have just came up on my own because I was in a different mindset. And when I left that conference, everything has shifted and I couldn't have predicted 2020 would be how it was. That's the powerful part in it, because I started this process in 2019. There's no way I could have. 2020 was the year of vision. I thought it was, you know, what I mean, I thought it was it was up for business. You know what I mean? And the way things shifted, I said, oh, this is happening at the right time because I was obedient. And I said, yes to this assignment because this wasn't on my radar. Yeah, man, 2020 was 2020 was the, the, the year of vision that none of us expected or desired. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, it, it was it was one of one of those things that, that definitely came came full circle. So so we so we got the book down. Right. You got you got the two books because you're gifted in writing. Everybody is not gifted in that, Nate. So I'll let you know. Congrats on being gifted in writing. OK. <laughs> <Thank> you, <laughs> and then on the other side, you're also you're you're, you're also a, a, a gifted, a gifted communicator. And, and I saw I saw you put out a post uh, a few days ago, I believe it was. And you said the reason why. And I'm, I'm I'm paraphrasing. So if it comes off, you know, arrogant or cocky, Nate didn't put it like this. This is I'm saying it. Uh, but but basically, uh, the the, po the post went on to say one of the reasons why I'm able to communicate with the audience and with individuals so well is because I spent so much time listening. Yeah, yeah, uh, man, it, it speaks volumes. And even when we talk about the concept of the love that, I, you know, the four steps, it's like the first one was listen. Um, I'm actually a introvert at heart. So it's hard to believe because people see me speak on stages. I'm in the schools all the time. I'm giving public, you know, uh, announcements and things like that. But it's like I'm actually very introverted. And, and I've always been that way since I was a kid. I was the one that's quiet in the back to myself, not trying to bring too much attention. And that has allowed me to develop this this skill of listening because I'm always listening. I'm hearing everything. I'm picking it up. Right. So even when I go into these rooms and I speak, I never come in in a way where it's like, oh, I got this. I'm about to blow them out the water. I need to come in and shake hands and listen because I don't want to give you this cookie cutter speech. I might need to change what I'm saying if you tell me something different. So I need to get in there early. I need to talk to the students. I need to listen to what they got going on. What's going great? What's going bad? And that has allowed me to, you know, really communicate a message that is impactful. Um, I think that that's the most important thing. I don't believe we can really truly communicate from a place that really serves and empowers people if we're not listening to what the problems are and how we can best be of service. So I think that that's huge that we we listen first. You know, I think all the way down to my relationship with my wife, I can try to share a bunch of stuff and say all these different things, but the reality is I need to sit back and listen a lot of the times. That way, when I respond, it's something fruitful. So for me, that has allowed me to be a great communicator. Again, I was always the shy person um, in the back, I was very introverted and I'm still that way. I'm cool with being by myself. Let me just kick it by myself and my thoughts. 
Um, but God has placed me on, you know, on this platform. He's given me this gift to communicate. Um, and the skill that I've developed since I was a child has been being introverted and listening. Praise God for the ability to communicate. But also, man, if, if y'all if y'all didn't just catch that bar that 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 Nate just dropped, uh, that that that's definitely a game changer. He says he gets in the room early. Okay, if you're a speaker, you're a coach, consultant, wherever you at, gets into the room early and gets the pulse of the people. But he's able to get the pulse of the people because he talks to the people. So don't be out here trying to be too cool walking in the room with your shades on and then people probably firing you up on the side. You got to talk to the people, hear what, hear what's going on, listen, and then make the tweak that you need to make. Just like Nate just laid up, man, that Nate, that was a good bar, man. That, that, that was a good bar. That was a good bar. Uh, uh, but in, in, in terms of, in terms of communicating, Nate, man, you, you, you got a podcast, Nate. Yeah. You, you have a pod, you have a podcast and, it, it, it's on brand as, as you are and you still challenging us to change what we normalize right change what we normalize podcast nate why did you decide you because you got the book part down right you got the books out there you you moving weight with the books i i, I see it i see it then you you're at the colleges you're speaking and you're connecting uh, at uh, uh in an authentic way right heart to heart but now you decide to do the podcast nay why yeah for me um i really wanted to continue to expand the message so the podcast initially started in 2020 when the pandemic happened um you know everything shut down but i still wanted to communicate so i decided to start recording from my phone um just doing audio just putting out there i had a bunch of different messages i wanted to really help people who were going through an anxious time and felt challenged to kind of start to change their mindset. And from there it grew, I took a little time off. I did, I actually did 30 episodes by myself from my office on a cell phone. <laughs> I want people to hear that. By myself on a cell phone, 30 episodes before I ever got in a studio or got any equipment. I didn't even have this, this MacBook computer that I'm using now or this microphone. I did 30 episodes on my phone and I decided to just talk to people about what they were going through and really offer practical tips and tell stories and encouragement. Um, and from there, it grew into what it is now where I'm actually recording in a studio and I can bring guests in. But I really want to just challenge people, man, that this concept of change will be normalized. It can really apply to any area of your life, um, even, you know, even outside of just the mental health aspect. Obviously, that's what I talk about a lot, especially when I bring guests on. Um, right now, I'm working with a lot of creative artists and I want to hear about the mental side of that and, and how to create from a place of healing. But the reality is that concept, when you read that change will be normalized. It's like, all right, where are the areas in my life that I want to change? What's not serving me? Let me create some new norms around that. You know, something as simple as, okay, I want to get my health together. I need to change what I normalize because obviously whatever I'm doing isn't working. And that's really the concept behind the whole message. But, um, yeah, I just really wanted to expand what I was doing. I seen the opportunity when the pandemic hit to continue to add value to people. You know, like most of us, we were scrambling because I actually had a lot of engagements lined up after that. And I'm like, oh, man, I got all these speaking engagement. Then everything just stopped. And I was like, OK, well, I can't stop speaking and sharing this value. I may not see the dollars up up front, but I still have value to give. So I just started to put it out. It was very raw, um, very transparent, uh, not a lot of tools to edit when you're using your phone. <laughs> but I put it out, man. And, um, you know, by the grace of God, it reached a decent amount of people, impacted some people. And now we're looking to grow that thing and really build um, a powerful, powerful podcast. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the content. The content looks good, Nate. The content content looks good, sounds good. And man, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you put out that caveat about you locking in for 30 episodes from your phone before you, you know, before you decided to take that next jump and that next step to, 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 to do the studio people. He said he, he, he's, his, his message is consistent. Okay. He said he put the book out. He said the book wasn't where he wanted to be, but he knew he had to get it out. So he put it out Then he made the tweak later. He said he put the podcast out 30 episodes. He said, you know what? After we did 30, it's time to now level up. So that's that's what he that's what he's done. 
So I just I just want everybody out there listening, man. Nate is dropping, he's dropping some gems. Okay. He's giving you the game right now. He really giving you the blueprint. Like, let, like, let's be honest. He said, You don't got no excuses. You got the phone. And just taking the time to get yourself tight, get yourself right, and then you can move on. Nate, that, that that's good, man. You 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 cooking good over there, man. <laughs> I appreciate good. you. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, man. But but Nate, so I I, I like I like to ask people this question because I like to just get inside of people's minds, right? I, I want I want you to think if you were gonna have you you you're gonna have a dinner, you get to invite three guests, right, living or dead. Who would be at at who would be at this dinner with you? To where you sitting down, you breaking bread, y'all chopping it up. And of course, you know, now you're a podcaster. This probably would turn into a podcast episode as well. But who 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 would be the three guests that 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 you bring in to the table, man? Oh, that's that's ooh, that's a fire question. Um, all right, right off the top, uh, I gotta bring Will Smith. Um, Will Smith is, is first and foremost. I love Will Smith, everything he does, um, just his tenacity, who he is. I'm I actually just finished his book um earlier it's an incredible read um I was, so will smith uh if i had to bring somebody else to the table i need to bring will smith i also need to bring kanye west and i don't know if that's because i just finished watching the documentary but i need to talk to kanye west um for sure and the last person wow this is an excellent question i said will smith kanye west um i would love the opportunity who and these two people, I got two, and it's, it's kind of unfair that I got to pick one. Uh, I'm going to go with Steve Jobs. Mm. Go with Steve Jobs. And I would love to, honestly, I would let them just talk amongst each other. And I'll probably just be sitting on the other side of the table uh, with a recorder. But I would love to hear their different perspectives. I see them all as geniuses on, on different levels. Um, but they've also dominated the lanes that they're in in a way that no one else ever has. They were very headstrong in the way and in the way that they believed in themselves like there was never a moment at least i believe that there, there was never a moment of doubt of what they wanted to create that was here and i'm gonna get this out to the world and it was never money driven which is powerful to me because we're in the industry where you know people are trying to get the dollar which i'm not mad at but these guys were thinking so innovative and uh yeah that, that those would be my three man man so you're gonna have will you have kanye and Steve Jobs, oh my goodness, that's a that's a solid answer, Nate. And I think Man. they would they would they would probably get along too very well. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can see that. I can see that. Hopefully they play nice. You right. know, hopefully they play nice. Dang man, okay. Now, so now we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun. So this, this, these are lighthearted questions. I guess that one's kind of a deep question. This is this is lighthearted. We we're gonna we're gonna transition to a segment I like to call this or that. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you some options and you're going to pick one or the other. You know what I'm saying? So, Nate, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Here we go, man. Here we go. Here we go. Beaches or mountains? Mountains. Winning the lottery or finding a soulmate? Finding a soulmate. Misquoted movies or mistaken lyrics? Misquoted movies. Hmm. Okay. 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 Sauce on the side or sauce on top? Sauce on top. Crunchy peanut butter or smooth peanut butter? Smooth. Okay. There we go. There we go, man. See, that wasn't that wasn't painful at all. Wasn't painful at all. Nate, please go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you, how they can follow you, and uh, connect with you at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thank you again um, for allowing me to be on your platform, um, audience. Please forgive my 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 killer dogs. They, they're about this big. Um, but yeah, you can find me pretty much everywhere on socials at Nate Evans Jr. Um, I'm not sure how I was able to lock that down, but it's literally on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn is Nate Evans Jr. Uh, my website, nateevansjr.com. You can find everything about me there from my speaking engagements to what I do with coaching, as well as my books and content. Um, yeah, so that's everywhere you can find me. Also, the podcast, Change What We Normalize on Instagram, as well as on YouTube there it is there it is we're gonna make sure to have have nate's links down in the show notes and nate i'm about to come back to you for the final thought just after this quick commercial break family if you are a speaker you're a coach you're a consultant and you're you're, you're like hey i do what nate does you know i'm trying to get out here in these streets i'm trying to get out here speak i'm trying to get the bag well you need to sign up 
and go to getpaywithpodcasting.com. All right. You need to sign up for the free training. Like I said, I'm going to give you some sauce. All right. I'm going to give you the, the secret hacks that I've used to leverage my business from going to a speaker to being a podcaster and then now helping other people do the same thing. So go to getpaywithpodcasting.com. You don't want to miss the training. Now back to Mr. Nate Evans Jr. for the final thought. Yeah, final thought is something that I always share. It's something that I live by, and that is um, someone's waiting on what you're building. I think that that's extremely important. Um, even about the three people we talked about that I would have dinner with, we were waiting on what they were building, and we all benefited from it. It added value to our lives. And I truly believe that with everything that I create, um, every book, product, uh, uh, speech, whatever it is that I'm doing, it's like, yo, somebody's waiting on this. And I realized that when I had a young man read my book, the first copy, the rough one, and he said he read it 10 times and that my story saved his life. Somebody's waiting on what you're building, which means you need to get up and go ahead and take that thought and bring it to life. Even if you never meet those people, somebody's waiting. Somebody may be waiting on this podcast five, 10 years from now, and this thing may bless them. So when you keep that in mind, you kind of pull yourself away from it. You get out of your feelings and you get the work and you make things happen because somebody is truly waiting on what you're building. Ooh, I couldn't have said it no better myself. Y'all, man, man. If, if you out there watching on YouTube, make sure you comment down below what you got from Nate, but also make sure you follow Nate. He told you, Nate Evans Jr. on everything. So make sure to follow, make sure to connect with them. Family, this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show where we help you establish a platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Until next time, peace and God bless because Nate said it. Somebody is waiting for what you're building. Man, we're out of here. <laughs>